Hello, welcome back to Frank's Garage. If this is the first time in this channel, welcome in. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And lastly, if you end up liking this video, please leave a thumbs up. So, we're back on my Nissan. Nissan Sentra, 1999, 1.6 liter. So, today we're gonna replace the alternator. Okay, now let me explain how I got to that um, um, to, to that conclusion that we got to replace that. So in order to know if you got something wrong with your electrical system or your charging system, it's if you're running and you get uh, your battery light on your dash flashing at you when you're driving or if it stays on. That's when you know you got something wrong uh, with your charging system. So it could be your battery, it could be the terminals, okay? It could be a bad wire going down and then coming over here to the alternator. It could be the alternator. It could be that you got a, a bad serpentine belt or maybe loose serpentine belt. It could be any of those things. So I know for sure that the serpentine belt is very very tight okay so that's that's not loose and I already checked it so the other things that I have left is the battery the wiring um, and the alternator okay so how you do that well you get a multimeter if you don't know what a multimeter looks like it's right here you get something like this and you plug it in to the battery i'm going to show you right now how i'm gonna do it okay hold on okay so we got a thing right here so you want to put the red lead on the positive terminal obviously this is the positive terminal it's got a plus sign right there and then the black lead on the negative side of the battery and then you put your um you're going to put your multimeter for i forgot the word for a second on the dc volts and put it over on where it says DC volts 20 okay or if you got a battery section like I do on mine you can just put it down at the battery where it says 12 volts okay either one it's gonna work so I got it I got right now a steady 12.6 voltage on my battery so in order to get to find out what is causing uh, the problem you got to start the engine you want to put a load on the battery you want to see if it's getting charged well in my case it was getting charged uh the moment i started up it was giving me um 14.2 volts that's really good because you want to you want to get your uh charging voltage to be between 14.2 and 14.7 if it's any higher than that then your alternator is overcharging your battery. And if it's lower than that, then you got a weak alternator. And then that's when you gotta find out if you got if you got lower voltage than 14.2, that's when you gotta come over here, check the uh, uh, the cable connector right there, check the other wire, which is a little lower on mine, and check the serpentine belt, check if it's loose or you know or coming apart you got to check all of those things in my case i already checked those and everything's tight there's nothing loose so in my case that leaves me off with the alternator but i'm not done testing yet okay okay so uh if it, my case was 14.2 that's the voltage i was getting the moment i turned on the car okay that's good so we got to see how low the voltage it's going to be the moment I put load 
a lot of load on my alternator so how do you put load on the alternator well that's easy you turn on your accessories like your radio your ac uh turn on your uh your um headlights turn on your uh turn signals turn everything on press on the brakes uh shift gears to drive to reverse all of those things you want to see how low that voltage is going to go well i'm going to tell you how low mine went it went down to 13.5 13.5 volts that's very low for it being turned on okay now the thing is the moment you let you turn off all of those things say you you had turned on every accessory on your car and it went low it went to 13.6 13.7 13.8 whatever number below 14. say you turn off everything back to how it was when you turned on your car the first time if your voltage goes back up to 14.2 then your alternator is fine in my case my voltage didn't go any higher than 13.8 which means alternator is weak at this point it's very weak and I, I did check the alternator is original from nissan so that alternator has been there since 1999 so yeah it's old it's gotta go so now you know when you whenever you get to that point whenever you get very low voltage and you turn off your accessories and it doesn't go back up to 14.2 or 14.7 or somewhere in between if it doesn't go up to that then you got a weak alternator now if your voltage is very high say it goes up to close to 15 volts then yeah you got something going on with your alternator maybe you got a short inside of it uh, if you, everything is nice and tight then you got to check for uh, a short to ground you got to check all of those things in my case I didn't have to do that in my case I just have a weak alternator uh, I don't have any short to ground I don't have any issues okay so it's just a weak alternator in my case so let's go do that let's uh oh oh before I do before I keep going I almost forgot uh, one thing I was noticing before the battery light started flashing in my dashboard was whenever I had the AC on, the radio on, uh, and I would turn on the turn signal to go either right or left, um, it would flash very fast, like if it were blown out. But I know my bulbs are not blown out because for two reasons. They're new, and the second one, it's LED. It's not halogen. So uh automatically i'm thinking okay uh that's not good something's going on let's see what what happens later well and another in another occasion i had um the situation where i was pressing on the gas and the car took its time to accelerate well you got to remember the charging system sends electrical current and voltage to your spark plugs, to your fuel injectors, because all those things work with electricity. So if your alternator is not making enough voltage, I mean, it's not sending enough voltage to the battery, then the electrical equipment, like your spark plugs, your coils, your injectors, they're not gonna get enough current to spark or to throw enough fuel into the combustion chamber and it won't fire up like it should and you lose power drastically so yeah it, it felt like it was bogging down like it completely lost power and then all of a sudden boom you get power so that is about alternator okay so i'm gonna go with that and that's my brief explanation on how you can find out whether you got a, a weak or overcharging alternator so um the process to find the short to ground uh you got to find uh, whether you got rust 
uh, where the alternator is mounted on because the alternator in this case in, in my case uh, it, I think it's mounted to the block I think so yeah I think it is mounted to the block instead of to the cylinder head well uh, the block is a ground spot so the the ground for the block is right there in the center of the screen and if that were rusted you know that would cause a short the ground and some other issues but that's clean yeah, it's a little oily I'll explain later why uh, but my problem is the alternator so we're gonna take that out in this video I'm gonna show you how to get that done now first of all you're gonna see this all of this mess right here and you're thinking man I gotta remove this gotta remove that gotta remove a whole lot of stuff well not really um, in this case all you gotta do is remove the two fans right here and then move this you can lift this up it's easy on the Nissan you can lift that up move it over to the other side and then you gotta you gotta try because if you got big fat hands like me it's gonna be tricky if your hands are skinny and small then yeah you can get in there easily with what I'm gonna say right now to get the alternator loose you gotta get that serpentine belt loose first so to get it loose it's got uh, a tensioner way down there and it, it gives tension not to the alternator but to the uh, either pulley which is next and lower than the uh, alternator so to get there like I said before you gotta uh, move some things and I believe you gotta remove this and put it over here first uh, I'm not sh quite sure on that yet but the reason is that the the bolt that you gotta loosen out to get the tensioner to loosen off is facing diagonal towards like it's facing like this like my finger is facing right now it's facing diagonal in towards the bottom so the reason you're moving these fans out of the way is that you can stick your hand down here with a ratchet and take it off. Okay. Now, obviously, before you do that, you gotta take off uh, the terminals because you don't want a spark coming at you and to scare you to death when you're doing this. You really don't want a spark, so you take that off first. Then you take the fans out, and then you hope to god that you can get to that uh tensioner bolt and once you get the tensioner bolt loosen out just enough where you can get the serpentine belt off of this pulley for the alternator then the rest should be easy okay so yeah i know the exhaust manifold here is kinda in the way but you don't have to take it out of completely or even move it it because once you get the alternator loosened out with the bottom bolt and the upper bolt taken off you can just take it off through here and voila and then when you bring in the new one it's the same thing you just bring it in through here under this hose and you should be good so let's get down to that okay okay so to get these battery terminals off you need a hold on it's a 13 yeah, you need a 13 for the negative. Not so much. Okay, that's loose. Out of the way. And then for the positive, you need a 12. If it can grab. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it's really in there. I probably need to change out this terminal. It's, um, it's quite old. 
Let's see if it comes off. Wow, no, that thing is in there. I don't really think I need to take it off, but I want to take it off uh, just in case, you know, be 100% sure that. There we go, come on. There we go. All right. And the beat. 1,000% sure. I'll take the battery out. All right. Okay, now let's head over to where I'm going to be at. Yeah, I'm using one of the new uh, stands that I got. I'm using the magnetic one right now. I really like the magnetic one, I'll be honest. So these are not 12, these are probably 10s. Okay. Let me go get the 10. Let me see if I can fit it in with this guy. Okay, I'm gonna disconnect in there because I gotta remove this one so I can get this one out Now you have a lot more room than you used to. Okay? All right. Okay, so the bolt for the tensioner, it's way down here. I believe it's an eight. I believe it's an eight, but I'm gonna check if it's a ten. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get some light.
Yeah, it's very difficult to see where it is. So let me move this. What I'm gonna do. Move this on here. Put it right there. This way I can see better. Or sorta. Not a ten, All right, it was actually uh five sixteen. Okay. I think I forgot to loosen out that bolt. I mean, it's a it's a nut for. Hmm. Let me check the uh, manual and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Alright, so I solved the issue why I was unscrewing the tensioner and nothing was happening. The reason was that the... Uh, let me see if I can get a good viewing for you guys. Okay, you see that um, bolt, I mean that nut right there? That's the one for the either tensioner. I mean either pulley, my bad. You have to loosen out that either pulley nut to the point where it's completely loose and then unscrew the tensioner but I did it upside down I did it the other way around the I already had loosened out the tensioner and uh, when I completely loosened that out I was able to just push the other pulley up a little and the belt is now loose so with that in mind with that in mind I can now remove the belt from the alternator and just leave it hanging okay all right so we got the we got to do the connectors so that's gonna be the uh, that's gonna be the power cable coming from the battery which is over here. I'm gonna pull this. Uh, I'm not even showing you. What, what's wrong with me? Forgot. Okay. So I already pulled this back. And, uh. Let's see. Maybe I can just, uh. I got nowhere, me nowhere metal. Okay, maybe I can just put you guys. Yeah. 
Eh, that'll work. Nope, that won't work. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Maybe that'll work. If it stays like that. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. Alright, so. Got that pulled back. We gotta get that nut off. Uh, this bolt off. And then the connector behind that bolt. This is not part of it. Okay, so. Not exactly sure what size that is. But I'm gonna guess that it's something like a 10. Could be a 10. Let's see. Nope, it's like a 12. Let me go get that 12. Ah, uh, that, that's why I hate the wobble extensions. They just they get on your nerves. You wanted to keep it straight. No, it wants to go to the side. That, that's just annoying. That's very annoying. Okay, that's out. I'm going to put the crush washer back in and the same nut back in. Okay. Then we got a small bolt and this one out. That's going to be a 10. Okay. Put this back on it. And lastly, the connector. All right, so the alternator is completely disconnected. Now we're gonna get the uh, upper bolt right here and the lower bolt, which is way down there. You can't see on the camera right now, but let's do the upper one. Then we'll do the, then we'll do the other one. So that upper one is, or could be, is or could be, at 12. Let me move this back. Yeah, we're probably using the wrong size. Anyway, wrong size ratchet. Let me get a 3 8. that loose in there 
because then we gotta do the uh, uh, the bottom one. I apologize for not showing you this. I'm just trying to get where I need to get with this bolt. It's so far in there. Okay. All right, let me see if I can show you where I am. Okay, so I'm back over here to the tight spot. And there is a uh, weight on there. Uh, there is a 14 millimeter bolt, which is the bottom bolt for the alternator. That thing is deep in there, so here we go. I'm gonna loosen it out. There we go. Okay, I don't need this long one anymore. I think I can go in here now with the uh, short one. And somehow get in there again and find that. Um, find the bolt. It's just so difficult because snow no lighting that can actually reach down there man nissan did it so difficult uh, i know that other cars are so much easier but uh Space is so tight. Space is very, very tight in here. Wow. Either way I go, it's just tight. Let's retry. Let's see. Nope. Not going in. Come on. Okay, got it. Okay. So what I noticed is that the bottom one is just two bolts. It's not just one long bolt. Uh, the bottom one came from all the way down here. Can't see it now. Uh, it's, yeah, it's down here. So I took that one out. It's this long one right here. And then the top one, I took it off. That's why now I'm able to move this completely. Like that. 
and I can get a better view to the boat down there which is being a pain in the butt <coughs> wow all right let's see if I can get to it now I'm going to go away from the thing. I'm going to go away. Okay, took the boat out. Now I should be able to just lift this out of here. Uh, no. No. I got one more thing to take off. And that is... Let me move you guys. So I'm going to take... Hold on. Uh, okay. You see that? Uh, come on. There's a bolt down here. I got to take off. So I can get this... Uh, long bracket that's over here on the side so I can get this long bracket out and I can get the alternator out of the way but it is difficult to get you guys a, a line of sight so that's this is the best I can do so here we go that is literally the best I can do right now I don't know what size that is. It could be any size. Honestly, yeah, it can be any size at this point. Knowing that I've used tens, a 10, an 8, a 12, a 14. Shoot. Okay, so that's a 12. But I need a longer extension because, because yeah. Yeah, I need a longer extension. Okay. Cut it out. Oh man, this thing is nasty. Okay. I just gotta unhook this from this. Okay. Screwdriver. I know it says screwdriver, but it's actually the flathead that I need. this back up here get this wiring out of the way and I should be able to lift this oh yeah it's out okay now I need to move you guys so you guys are not in the way
right. This is how I know it's still the original. It's got the logo right there. kind of difficult especially getting that bottom bolt to the uh, separate team belt side man that was difficult okay so I'm gonna pause the video here and I'll be right back with a new one <laughs> 